To imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Horn, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Your Eminence, with all due respect, I prefer to keep my reasons for coming here to myself. I promise, it has nothing to do with the legendary party that you all appear to be preparing for. I believe what you will, my son. However, everything is related to the legendary parties organized by our host. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, Cardinal. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island, and only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here, am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right, this is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A Cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Ricci, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Well, thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but... Given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew, my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the Church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. <sighs> if only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is commendable. But as we work together on a daily basis, it is surely just an oversight. Most certain. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? Be it mother or myself, our motto has always been discretion in all things. And to promise to never betray a word of honor. Was your secret safe with mother? It will be even more so with me. You have convinced me. The mystery with which your mother manages her business proves that she carries your motto close to her heart. Your words seem sincere, my son. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, your eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. 
Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on, just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will read it? Your Eminence, that is just not possible for me. Why is that? I have always had a Cartesian mind, and I won't make false promises. I respect you too much for that. I spend my time trying to find logical and reasonable answers to problems which, at first glance, seem supernatural. I'm not saying I don't believe in God as a concept. I just don't believe in the God of your sacred texts. And I don't want to lie to you. Even though your answer does shock me, my son, I shall only hear your honesty. Lisa, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Riche. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priests' safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi. He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet, it is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. 
As for me, I've been invited by Sir Horn, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord! Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. So, don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh. We shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this home. I saw him in my vision. My vision is more important. Let's follow home. I'll follow you, sir. Mr. Washington, I hope to speak with you at greater length on another occasion. Emily, please excuse me, but I would like to speak to Sir Holm. I shall see you later. My friend, I hope our dear Giovanni is well. Ah, uh, the troubles in France have fatigued him, but he will recover slowly. Do not fear. He apologizes for remaining in Rome. The voyage was too much for him. And right he was too. The mildness of the Mediterranean, eh? Come, sit down and have something to eat, my friend. You look rather pale. Excuse me, sir. I have been neglecting my duty. I haven't introduced myself. Sir Gregory Holm, an old friend of Lord Mortimer's. A real pleasure, sir. You who must be well used to the court of France, how do you find this peaceful little haven? Charming, if I hadn't come here for disturbing reasons. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Indeed. I wanted to ask you. Would you have any information about the disappearance of my mother? Ah, uh, very little, I'm afraid, my young friend. Your mother came at the invitation of Lord Mortimer. Then, one fine day, we couldn't find her anywhere. That's it? As I said, I don't know very much. Lord Mortimer had the entire area searched immediately. We found no clue as to her disappearance. But I am convinced that as soon as Lord Mortimer becomes available, he will explain the situation. Thank you for your answers, Sir Holm. But I beg your pardon. I get the impression I know you. Have we met? Except in my dreams, of course. Not that I remember, young man. Uh, perhaps you are mistaking me for another member of the Chamber of Lords. And what with the wig and the powder, it wouldn't be the first time. No, you were definitely the one I saw threatening my mother. I thought... 
never mind. It'll come back to me. Would you allow me one last question, sir? I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Could my mother have had a problem with someone during her stay here? No, not at all. Your mother has always been charming company, and everyone got on very well with her. Not even a servant? <laughs> Certainly not. Everyone gets on well with the famous Sara de Riche, my uh -huh. <gasps> No! <gasps> Elizabeth! <sighs> I should have insisted that you rest in your room. Do you want me to call someone? Let me handle this. I'm used to this kind of thing. Miss, can, can you hear me? Leave me. It's just a dizzy spell, don't worry. You'll be all right. Her heart rate is already becoming more stable. Wow, poor girl's had her hands tattooed. I've seen these pinnacles before in old occult books from the end of the 12th century. I don't know what that young woman's trying to protect herself from, but she definitely takes it seriously. I'm so sorry, I... Can you tell me something about her? The dizzy spell is harmless, but her general condition is frankly alarming. You seem to know her. What is she suffering from? I don't know exactly, but her father sent her to us in the hope that she would recover all her faculties. It would appear she suffers from episodes of dementia. Is she aggressive? Sometimes, but only toward herself. She has never hit out at anyone else, I can assure you of that. She wasn't like that this morning. Something must have upset her. That's one way to put it. The poor girl is exhausted, but that's not the cause of her problem. You're all right, Elizabeth. Do you feel any better? When did she arrive? Uh, four days ago. Okay. My mother had already gone missing. Are you all right, Elizabeth? You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me... I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? Isegne della bestia. Sorry, your eminence. I don't speak Italian. Ah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Gentlemen, it's getting late. It is time for everyone to go to bed. It has been a long day. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, your eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? So, it really is a list of French countrymen. Piaggi wasn't lying. My son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug. A Frenchman, it seems. By the cut of his cloth, I'd say he's a member of the French Revolutionary Government. You should do something, my son. Anyway, if we were in France...
You're right. That sounds like it might be bad. Good lord, that's all I needed. How am I supposed to keep Adams busy now? Do you know if the man is armed? No, I don't. Uh, I barely saw him. If this thing starts to sound serious, call the servants for help. I certainly will. Oh, thank you, my son. May God watch over you. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams? Don't worry about that anymore, Your Eminence. I had to step in, but everything's under control. <laughs> what an adventure, my son. <laughs> I am relieved to hear it. You acted as a good Christian. In these troubled times, we need more men of your caliber. It's nothing, Your Eminence. I did what I had to do. Well, you did the opposite. Good. Well, thanks for the news. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the home? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, Luis. Now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. Dear friends, I bid you welcome I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru. French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. Yes, I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. <laughs> Surprisingly, no Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Waldner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that Your Eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, your minutes. But. I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. To tell you the truth, not really. You are right. Be positive. Perhaps Sarah is in the company of Lord Mortimer and they will both turn up shortly. <laughs> but while I have you with me, I... I have a question for you. Go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? 
if I said to you, where all eyes size you up, would it mean anything to you? I don't know if it's the place you're looking for, Louis, but it makes me think of the portrait gallery. There's a gallery here? Can you tell me where to find it, please? Of course. Just go through the door at the end. It will lead into the library. Continue all the way through, and you'll end up in the gallery. You'll see it, Louis. When you get there, you'll know. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son.